afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to watch. I've got an update for you guys on your um, pretty big system that's going to be moving through. It's pretty strong. Um, as of now, it's um, not completely developed yet, but it will fully develop in the next few hours. So this is going to be a very fast, um, I guess you could say, strengthening storm. So we have to really dive into this a, a lot because there's going to be many areas hit by some hazardous weather out there, including the North Central, the Ohio Valley, Northeast, and the Southeast. So we have a million things to talk about, but we are going to be looking at pretty much all the aspects of these, you know, different types of weather that is going to be happening from these storms. So we're going to start with your alerts. And you can see that right now you have, it's, 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 busy now already and it's you know it's not at its worst we're gonna i really want to start down here in the south because that's where the most action is happening you have a widespread tornado watch this goes for almost all of northern louisiana and then most of eastern arkansas so i really think this is going to expand later i think the national weather service just want to make just wants to make sure that completely that you know these storms will definitely uh, strengthen and develop w develop into these you know major severe storms so you also have this flood warning or flash flood warning I should say this goes out for uh, a few counties in north central Arkansas and then a tiny tiny area here down in the uh, border between southern or sorry southeastern Oklahoma and West southwestern Arkansas. So it's going to get busier, I'll tell you that. You do have a few small areas with this severe thunderstorm warning. This is just for the first storms that are get are going to start to get going. Um but you will see a lot more of these warnings start popping up. So I would say the most alerts to watch out for is this tornado watch and this severe thunderstorm warning here. You do also have these uh, flood warnings. This does go out for a big area of western Arkansas and then southeastern Oklahoma as well. But that's pretty much the gist of it. You also have some wind warnings for Ohio, uh, Indianapolis, and pretty much the Ohio Valley. So it is going to get windy, I'll tell you that. Um... We're not going to be taking a look at the winds today just because we have a pretty extended update. I just feel like, you know, we got to keep it a little bit low. Um, but I do think that if I have time, like, you know, before the wind vent uh, cools down, I will definitely be showing you guys the wind map. But just I just want you to tell you guys now that it's going to get windy tonight into tomorrow morning. So just watch out for these winds. Um, we do have also this uh, winter storm warning. This goes out for some areas in western Iowa and then a tiny county down there in southeast, southwestern uh, Wisconsin. So that's pretty much it for your alerts. And we're going to be starting with your storms in the southeast. So as you can see, this was 8 a.m. this morning. You did have storms that were moving through central Arkansas, but those weren't very strong. You can see that you know, you're not getting that much red as you would have when these storms really, when these kind of storms really start impacting, they get a lot more, you know, dark in color when you're looking at the radar. But you can see pretty much this is, this is in pretty much just an hour. And these storms pr look pretty, pretty intense. And you have these are going to be very, you know, very, very strong. So you're going to see a big tornado risk unfold across the southeast. You're also going to have some very uh, large amounts of rainfall that are going to fall off these storms. And then some damaging winds. So maybe a damaging wind threat or two could be out there. So it's a lot to watch. And I'm just going to keep playing this. And you can see that it doesn't form a frontal line until, like, you know, probably... Uh, after 11 o'clock, midnight, so, because, you know, you don't see one starting to form. Uh, down here in the, like, Gulf, 
like this is below this is south of uh louisiana you do have a frontal line that started to form but you still look inland you still don't have that frontal line yet so it's going to continue to storm very strong throughout the night so i don't want you guys to think that you know it's not going to be bad uh, at night, but it's going to be bad during the day. It's going to be bad both during the day and the night. But just in general, whenever you see a storm like this, you never want to say anything's not going to be bad because if the whole reason why you're questioning about that just tells you that it's definitely going to be bad and in at least one part of the day. But you see, it finally does try and form a frontal line here. I'll I want to get it right here. This is this was the hour. So, 10 p.m. So pretty close to when I guess you do have this frontal line that'll last for an hour or so, but then that breaks apart and this forms its own system um, as we continue through tomorrow. But you can see that it kind of it's almost finished, but then it starts to ramp up again, and then this is the beginning of your new system. You can see you have. A very very weak and uh, newly made low pressure system that finally pops up here in the Gulf and you also have this piece of energy that's connecting with this piece of low pressure so that's gonna be it for your radar I guess you could say because we're looking at the FE3 it's a radar type I know I keep saying this I just want you guys to understand that the reason I'm looking at this because it's a radar type so it kind of gives me a good idea on you know how dense this rainfall is going to be now we're going to be looking at your risk or chances for severe weather so you can see that it's it's already active you already have a three out of five risk for the severe weather so we'll start with your uh below one risk for severe weather so this would go for chicago uh, down into Houston, Mobile, Alabama, and pretty much down any farther south than Louisiana. So, this does go for Kansas City, Springfield, Bowling Green, Louisville, uh, uh, Indianapolis, and pretty much all these areas in the uh, southern plains. So, you could have severe weather in many of these areas. You can see that this below one, or I guess you could say below zero risk, it does have a pretty good population. Um, we don't ca we don't have it calculated just because it doesn't. It's not really uh, considered a um, risk, but it you know it's still it's like a chance, like if you if you will. Um, but you know, you Tulsa, Oklahoma, Springfield, like I said, uh, Jefferson, Missouri, watch out for that. It's going to be possible. I think it should be over right now for uh, Missouri, the Missouri area and the Oklahoma area. So I think right now is what we're looking at here. I don't think yet we're in that enhanced risk. Um, but we're going to go to our marginal risk now. So this includes Ev Evansville, Springfield, uh, not quite Pedroia, um, Lufkin, Texas. Mobile, Alabama, Birmingham, uh, Mississippi, no, sorry, not Mississippi, Alabama, um, Jackson, Tennessee, this does go out for you guys, um, Houston, and those are pretty much all the major cities. St. Louis is actually on this border, um, if I didn't mention you guys. So that would be all the, your areas for the, you know, one out of five risk. So that population is over 20 million people. So a very widespread risk for this severe weather. The, I would say risk because, you know, it's not definite for these areas that are only in a 1 out of 5 risk, but it's still out there. But once we get into this 2 out of 5 risk and then the 3 out of 5, that's when severe weather approaches the likely zone or the likelihood of severe weather. So you could see that in the slight risk, now we're getting into uh, areas of central and southeastern Arkansas, uh, all of Louisiana, um, a lot of Mississippi, 
um, and then pretty much this three states border here. So this goes for Little Rock, Arkansas, Shreveport, Louisiana, um, Alexandria, Louisiana, um, Memphis, Tennessee. That also goes out for you guys, but that's pretty much all the major cities for that. Two out of five risk, also known as a slight risk. Uh, you do have a eight uh, million population in this risk, so it's going to be a it it's, it could be a I don't want to say deadly, but it's possible because when you have that big tornado risk for all these major cities, it's not good because you have all those people living in those cities that are going to be affected by those storms. So really keep an eye on these storms. Now we get into the enhanced risk. This is where things get really serious. When you see an enhanced risk pop up like you have here, this is when you have a very dangerous situation. You have Jackson, Mississippi, a very um, beautiful and very busy city. And then you have Greenville, uh, Mississippi as well. So, you have two major cities that are going to be uh, hit by a type of severe weather. I don't know what exactly it's going to be because we're not there yet, but I just know that for sh that it's definitely something is going to happen in these areas. So, I just want to show you guys that it's going to be very possible for a big area. This is a this is a very large area from Chicago down south. So I really want you guys to pay attention to what's going to be happening with these storms into today. The tornado risk, it's pretty much off the charts. You have Jackson, Greenville, almost Alexandria in this 10% risk. So they have these dash marks here. This indicates a very or a a above normal risk for tornadoes so this black uh, line here is the significant risk for tornadoes you can see that you have this significant risk here because you have the black um, but you do have a five percent risk here for Little Rock Shreveport uh, New Orleans possibly could be in this ri this five percent risk for tornadoes a little bit later into the night. That could get upgraded, and then your two percent risk pretty much goes out for that same area as the slight risk. Um, but you know, I just want to let you guys know that the tornado risk is going to be pretty much the same, if not higher, than the severe weather risk. So please stay safe with these storms if they impact you. So uh, keep an eye on what the National Weather Service is going to say. Wind, we still have that uh, big wind risk that's going to be impacting not only uh, the south, but also I do think the Ohio Valley could have some very gusty winds, especially the uh, Illinois area. So uh, just, you know, in general, just uh, be, be ready for severe weather. The hail we don't need to look at because it's only a 5% risk and, you know, these storms that impact during the winter, uh, you don't really have that much of a hail risk because uh, the temperatures are slightly colder. So this is going to be a brief section of the video. We're going to be talking about your, uh, your rain totals. So it's not the end of the world, but it is going to rain a lot. You have a scattered area for two inches of rain and possibly even two and a half inches of rain. This goes for uh, southern uh, southern Illinois and possibly even uh, eastern Iowa. So this also goes for Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, Florida, I would say. Not exactly uh, south Florida like the Miami area, but I would say... The North Florida area. So, the um, border between Georgia, uh, Alabama, and Florida, I think, is where the most rainfall will fall um, within these storms. But I do think that 
you will have another band of very heavy rainfall that will move through the Ohio Valley tonight into tomorrow morning. Uh, the northeast, um, this also does go for you guys. Not as much rain, but you will get some rain for the, from this upcoming system. I wouldn't expect over half an inch of rain. I would say half an inch of rain would be pretty surprising to me. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for your rainfall totals. Now we're going to be going to the north central U.S. Um, we're going to be talking about these uh, bands of heavy snow that are going to be moving through. And this will accumulate and we'll be taking a look at the snowfall totals a little bit later. But we're going to be showing you guys um, what's going to be happening in the Ohio Valley. And then your snow that's going to be moving through the north central. So you can see 6 p.m. So this would be uh, an hour um, into the future, you have, you know, a lot of rain that's going to be moving through, uh, Indianapolis and Idaho, um, I would say Idaho is actually not in this risk, I meant Ohio, I'm sorry guys, I'm, it's a very, very long day for me, so, you know, when I hear Idaho and I, Idaho, uh, Idaho and Ohio in my head, I think, you know, Idaho, but, um, Ohio. So, you see that on the back side of this, you do get some snow that's going to be moving through central, uh, uh, central Iowa and then possibly even northern Missouri. I think it's going to be more for central Iowa and then uh, Wisconsin, but, you know, just keep watching. This doesn't show any signs of stopping. As this rain finally moves out of Michigan, giving a pretty... A heavy downpour of some possibly even thunderstorms. You could have some thunderstorms, maybe a few flashes of lightning out there. Um, but you do get a pretty pretty good rainstorm that's going to move through central Michigan. Then on the back side of this, you get very heavy snow that's going to be moving uh, into parts of northern Michigan and uh, central and northern well, central, northern, and southern uh, Wisconsin, it's just pretty scattered, so we don't really have any pinpoints for this. But um, that moves out, and then by the 10th, you should have some pretty clear skies. So uh, it's that's pretty much it for the north central. I just want to you know, make sure you guys uh, know that there's going to be some heavy snow that's going to be tracking kind of like this. If you follow my mouse, so I'll do this again. It's going to be trucking like this. And then your uh, heavy rainfall here in the Ohio Valley and into Michigan. So we're going to be taking a look at your snow totals. And this goes out 42 hours. So you, we have plenty of time for this system to move out when we're looking at the model run. But there is going to be a lot of snowfall falling with these storms. It's the, the FV3 isn't lying. Because you do have a, f a few areas that could receive over a foot of snowfall in central and southern Wisconsin um, into parts of central Iowa. So I would say the most snow is definitely going to fall in Iowa and Wisconsin. So, southern Wisconsin and eastern Iowa is where the most snow is going to fall. Uh, Iowa, you guys are going to be topping off at about a foot of snow. Um, this goes for central Iowa, like I said, for the third time. Uh, and then southern um, southern Mich uh, Wisconsin, I would say you guys could expect up to um, 14 inches of snow. That would go for southern Wisconsin and then northern Michigan, topping off at about 8 inches of snow. That would be for the northern tip of you guys. So, that's pretty much it for the snowfall. Just do also want to show you guys, there could be a, a band of snowfall that could give additional totals that could reach the um, foot, foot of snow mark um, for the very northern uh, edge of, um, excuse me, Missouri. So, you guys in northern Missouri also are not excluded from this uh Big risk for um, very large amounts of snowfall. Then you get another band of snow that's going to be move, moving through Kansas 
and Oklahoma giving up to three inches. So that's pretty much it for snowfall totals. And then we'll be taking a look at the Northeast. So the Northeast isn't, you know, isn't that bad. You have some clear skies, and then once the storm moves through, uh, or starts to move through, you get mostly rain. And this doesn't show any signs of changing to snow or anything. So the first band of rain looking like it's going to be a little bit more western. So this would go for pretty much upstate New York, Buffalo area, and northwestern Pennsylvania. All of you guys would get this rainfall. Uh, Pennsylvania could also receive a little bit more rainfall. As you can see, you get some oranges um, popping up here on the radar. But as you continue this throughout the day, you get some ice and you get some rain. It's starting to show up here. This goes for uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and some parts of New York State. And it lo it's looking like it's going to be a good winter storm for you guys in New Hampshire, Vermont. I would say more than uh, northern half of you guys. And then Maine looking like an all-out winter storm for you guys. A lot of snow is going to fall in Maine. But, um... You can see that's a pretty fast-moving system, and it breaks up pretty late, so it's not going to be that long, considering that you have, one, your short duration of the storm, and then also your late breaking. So, you should be having clear skies around the 10th, so it's pretty much the same timing for all you guys, except you guys down in the south, if you're looking for that sunshine to reappear after that system comes through. You are going to get some very warm temperatures on the back side of this. You're going to have early spring-like temperatures that are going to be moving into the northeast. So it's going to be very warm for you guys along the I-95 corridor and the interior parts of the northeast. So that's it for the northeast, and we're just going to be taking a look at the latest GFS model for what's going to be happening with these next storms. So you have your first system that flies through. Here's your snow that's going to be moving through Wisconsin. Uh, you get another s rainstorm down here in the southeast. This was actually the one I mentioned um, at the end of the section when we talked about the southeast in the update. On the back side of this, you get a huge Arctic plunge that goes all the way down into the southern Texas. So it's going to get very cold. This even goes down into the Gulf for a few hours. And then this moves into Florida too. And this moves along with your big rainstorm that's going to be now transitioning into some rain and some snow um, into uh, the parts of the Carolinas. So so the Carolinas, including Southeast Carolina, uh, South, Southeast South Carolina, and North Carolina, could see a lot of snowfall from this system. You can see that it, you know, I just want to mention that throughout the day this hasn't been changing. You still have consistent snowfall that's going to be moving through, and I do think that there will definitely be at least an inch of snowfall falling down here in the Carolinas. But uh, that storm finally moves out. You got another system looking like it's going to be a pretty good uh, thunderstorm or possibly severe weather outbreak for you guys in the south central. I don't want to say pretty good because, you know, it's obviously bad when severe weather happens, but meaning that it's going to be, you know, pretty active, I'll say. Um, that moves out looking like a pretty much all rainstorm for you guys in the northeast. Um, you get another system that's going to be moving through the north central, giving a pretty good snowstorm for you guys in Minnesota, the Dakotas, and um, Nebraska. That kind of pairs with this n new piece of energy down here in the southeast looking like a yet another good rainstorm for you guys. Um, and then that moves out looking like a pretty major system. You get very strong cold air that's going to be moving through. So a few Arctic blasts that are going to be moving through. Um, this one stretches well into the northeast. This goes way farther south than the northeast, stretching into the southeast now. So a lot of cold air is going to be in these areas, especially 
the north central but you are going to have a little bit of a dry spell here for a few days and then you finally get this new major system that's going to be moving through looking like a pretty much all rainstorm for you guys in the northeast and that's pretty much it other than this really big storm that's going to be moving through um but this is way into february this is almost into april or sorry march um but you do have a pretty good ice storm showing up for you guys in the ohio valley and a lot of snow for you guys as well so we're just going to be briefly talking about the possible snowfall totals i'm going to put this out um 384 hours uh I'm going to put this to the 12Z because the 18Z um, isn't available as of t right now. Um, but you can see, once this loads, it's going to snow a lot in these areas. I mean, you're getting almost three feet of snow for you guys in Wisconsin uh, out the next, you know, I don't know, two weeks. So, I just want you guys to note that it's going to snow a lot. And then also in the Carolinas, this is no joke. You do have up to a foot of snow for both South Carolina and North Carolina. So, a lot of snow is going to fall in pretty much the whole U.S. So, just watch out for all this snow that's going to be moving through and then all these possible major systems. That's going to wrap up the video, guys. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, like, share, comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. And we're going to be keeping an eye on these next few systems. But, um, like I said again, this is going to wrap up the video, so we'll catch you guys in the next one. So, see you guys.